We are now in day two of solving quadratic equations. And today we're going to talk about the quadratic formula. It is everyone's favorite algebra one formula. It's not the one you're gonna be using most often, that's the slope formula, but it's everyone's favorite because there's a song associated with it. And next class period, the geometry kids will be singing it to you. In the meantime, you need to make sure that you know the formula, or at least have it written down so that you can sing along. And the formula is x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of the quantity b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now for the purposes of the song, we're gonna call that negative b. And we're going to just say x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And what this formula gives you is the value of x when you're given some equation in this format, meaning simplified standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So if I ask you to solve a quadratic that looks like this, all you have to do is plug in the a, b, and c into this formula, and it gives you those x values. So this formula is used to solve quadratic equations. It's used to find x-intercepts of quadratics when you have that bx or linear term and opposite operations fail you. You can use it with any quadratic, meaning ones that don't have this bx, but it's actually too much work to do that. Now I'd like to show you where these formulas come from, and I'll do that later on because you need to know something called completing the square to figure out where this formula is from. And I'll show you that later in the year after we learn how to factor. In the meantime, I want you to be able to apply this formula. I want you to know this formula and a couple of things about it. So first and foremost, it needs to be in simplified standard form before it can be used because you need a single a term, a single b, and a single c. If you have like 3x plus 4x, well, that's, that's two terms, and you need to combine them into one right? Now if I am asking you to give me an exact answer, you have to give me an exact answer and sometimes that means you have to give me simplified radicals and that's where all the annoyance comes in with the quadratic formulas having to simplify your answer. Now if I ask you for an approximate answer, you just plug that thing into your calculator and press enter. Now one thing you have to know about this formula is that it's really two formulas squished together into a single formula. One formula has negative b plus the square root, blah, 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 and the other formula has negative b minus the square root, blah, blah, blah. Um, but since it's writing down the same thing over and over again, they just put the plus and minus to squish it into a single compact formula. Now, if you split the formula up, because you can split up fractions like this, and you might have noticed that, oh, hey, check that out. x equals negative b over 2a. That just happens to be the formula for the axis of symmetry. And then you have this negative b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so you have some random parabola with an axis of symmetry here at x equals negative b over 2a. And we know from studying parabolas and their properties that this axis of symmetry cuts the parabola in half. And if I have a point on this side, that's a certain distance, then that same distance away is another point. And so what this thing here is, this is what you have to add and subtract to get these two points. So this distance here is the plus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and this distance here is also b squared minus 4ac over 2a, but you have to subtract it from that line of symmetry to get this other point. So I have the where the line of symmetry is, I add this value, I get one root, I have the line of symmetry, I subtract this value, I get the other root. So now let's look at this thing, this one half, in a little more detail. So the part under the radical, the b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant and it tells you the number and the nature of the roots, meaning how many x-intercepts it has and what type of number they are. So if we go back to our little drawing, if this is my line of symmetry and I don't need to add anything to the line of symmetry to get a root, that means my x-intercept happens to be the vertex. 
So the only way for this to become zero is if this numerator is zero. B squared minus 4AC equals zero means I'm going to have one root. And so now let's look at B squared minus 4AC being less than zero. Well, less than zero means this thing is negative. And if I have a negative number under the square root, that means the square root is an imaginary number, and therefore I have no real roots. Now I have imaginary roots, I have two imaginary roots, and what this means for the graph is no x-intercepts. And for the one root, that means my vertex is my x intercept. So if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0 or positive, it means I'm going to get two real roots or two x-intercepts. Now I can tell a little bit more because if b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square, not only do I get a real root, I get a rational root, which means the square roots in the expression all drop away and I can be left with a half, a third, 15 over 27, whatever, just something that's radical free. Which means, in contrast, if b squared minus 4ac is not a perfect square, that means I'm going to have an irrational root, meaning there's going to be a square root left in my number. Now, because we have this b squared minus 4ac, this discriminant, it's actually super important for us, and it can make our lives a lot easier. Because if you don't have a graphing calculator and you just want to check and see how many x-intercepts you have, check the discriminant. What kind of roots does 3x squared plus 9x plus 18 equals 0 have? So first things first, I have to check to make sure that this is in simplified standard form and equal to 0. So yes, indeed it is. It is in the correct format and equal to 0. So now I know my a value is 3, my b value is 9, and my c value is 18. I'm going to check the discriminant. I'm going to check b squared minus 4ac. So I'm going to plug in all of my numbers. So b squared is going to be 9 squared minus 4 times 3 times 18. And instead of doing the arithmetic by hand, I have this trusty graphing calculator, which will find everything for me and I get negative 135. And so what does that mean for this equation? It means that there are zero real roots. Or you can say no real roots. Now, the thing about this is, if you have a graphing calculator, and I ask you what kind of roots does blah equation have, then you replace that zero with a y equals and you graph it, and you look and see how many x-intercepts it has. Now let's do an example where we actually solve using the quadratic formula. So first things first, I have to check to make sure this is in the correct format. It is x squared equals 7x minus 6. It's not equal to 0, so I have to convert it equal to 0, and I have two options. Okay, Either I can subtract off the x squared and have negative x squared plus 7x minus 6 equaling 0, or I can keep the x squared positive and move these two terms over and get x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 0. And what's the difference with these two parabolas? Well, this one's a frowny face parabola, and this one's a happy face parabola, but they have something very important in common, and those are their x-intercepts. So it doesn't matter which side you move everything to when you're solving, as long as you get your signs correct, because in one instance you may get a frowny face parabola, in the other instance you get a happy face parabola, but they're going to end up having the exact same x-intercepts. So let me show you that by graphing the two equations. So as I graph, you see one's frowny face, one's happy face, they have the same lines of symmetry and the exact same x-intercepts. So it doesn't matter what side you move things to as long as you get your signs right. Now, I personally like having a leading coefficient or an a value that's positive, so I'm going to be using this one in my calculation. Now, looking at this, I need to be able to pick out the a value, the b value, and the c value. Well, the a value looks like it's missing, but remember there's a phantom 1 there, so a is really 1. And then b is in 7, it's negative 7 because the sign goes with it, and c is 6. 
Now I want to find the discriminant to see what kind of roots I'm going to get and what kind of, what kind of work I can expect to do. So I have the b squared minus 4ac. b squared is negative 7 squared. Notice how I put it in parentheses because I want to make sure the sign ends up correct. Minus 4 times 1 times 6. This b squared term, big hint kids, this b squared term, when you do the b squared, it better come out positive. So if you ended up squaring some number and it ends up being negative in algebra 1, you did something wrong. All right, so negative 7 squared is 49 minus 24, which gives me 25. So now I know what kind of roots I can expect. I can expect, because 25 is a perfect square, rational roots, which means no square roots are left. Had this been 24 or 12 or something like that, I would have to simplify the radical which means I have a little bit extra work with simplification. So my discriminant is 25. And so if I look at my formula, the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, I actually have some of the work already done. Because I did the b squared minus 4ac over here, I know that this quantity here is 25, so I don't have to do this work again. And so then very simply, what I have is opposite of negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 25 all over 2 times 1. And now what this becomes is an order of operations problem, which you can either do by hand or you can use your calculator. The thing to remember, though, is that this is really going to give me two answers because this is really two formulas that have been squished together. One version of the formula, and I'm going to simplify it a little bit, is going to be 7 plus the square root of 25 over 2, and the other is going to be 7 minus the square root of 25 over 2. And these are two very distinct answers. You just can't type in one, you know, one of these expressions and make one positive and make one negative. That doesn't work that way. So I get 7 plus 5 over 2 and 7 minus 5 over 2. And 7 plus 5 is 12 divided by 2 gives me one solution of 6 and 7 minus 5 is 2 divided by 2 gives me another solution of 1. Now before I put the happy face I should check to make sure it's right. And I can do this by going to the table and checking the value at 1 which is 0 which is what x-intercept should have and then the value at 6 which is also 0. So I know that this answer is correct. So for this check, we're basically going to use one equation, 3x squared equals 6x minus 2, and I want you to do four things with this one equation. First, I want you to write it in the correct format and tell me the values of a, b, and c. Second, I want you to use those a, b's, and c's to tell me how many roots this equation has so 0, 1, or 2. Then I want you to use this exact same equation and tell me what types of roots are they. Are they going to be real or imaginary or rational or irrational? And then I want you to give me the exact value of the roots in simplified form. If they're irrational, you're going to be left with square roots in your answer. And remember to simplify those square roots.